Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. In a dormant mine, buried deep in the Pennsylvania woods, a group of strangers feel the call of the forest, always returning and never knowing why. Join Paul Sherman, played by Chris, as he attempts to track down a missing friendly, searching for a cryptid known as the Stick Man. In this Delta Green scenario, Operation Big Stick, ran by Adam. Operation Big Stick is a Delta Green scenario that was written by Melonbread. If you'd like to contact us, you can find us on Twitter and on Facebook at Twin Cities by Night, where you can find a link to our Discord channel and all up-to-date information. If you'd like to support us, you can find us on Patreon at Twin Cities by Night. We hope you enjoy. How's it going? And welcome. This is going to be our first Delta Green duet. Me and Chris are going to be playing Operation Big Stick today, written by Melon Bread. So this is the this is going to be hopefully the first of more to come uh, Delta Green duets. Hell yeah! Uh, I'm hoping to get some of the other guys on board with it as well, uh, if time permits. So this is gonna be fun, man. I'm like I'm hyped up. Shout out to the Esoteric Order role players in their Vampire the Masquerade duet, but I really kind of like Doug how just with two players, they're able to like kind of take their time and focus on one character. So yeah, I'm really excited for us to start doing this with Delta Green and and uh, potential all this stuff in the future, man. It's fucking dope. And Adam's been wanting to run Delta Green for like a fucking quick minute, and now our schedule's allowed to where we normally, insider secret here, we usually record on Sundays, but now with the, my current job, I have Mondays off, and so Adam gets Mondays off occasionally, and that's why we're doing this. So I'm really stoked, man. I'm and uh, to second what Chris said, uh, shout outs to Esoteric Order of Role Players for providing the perfect model of uh, how yeah. duet games should be. Uh, it's fucking awesome shit. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> their music shout outs selection. to Craig for <laughs> showing me Delta Green, which I fucking love. Do this, man. I'm ready, sir. All right, so we'll get into it. Chris is going to be playing uh, Paul Sherman. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, Paul Sherman? Paul Sherman grew up in Pennsylvania. He came from a broken home. His parents divorced when he was about like 12 years old. He kind of went back and forth. He lived with his mother at first, and then he started becoming just a little bit of a handful. He wasn't like a horrible kid, but he you know, wasn't doing the schoolwork and was getting in fights and doing stuff like that. So his father, who was a steel worker, got custody of him until he was about 18. He, him and his father really didn't get along too well. His father had gotten remarried and had other kids. Uh, but, you know, he just kind of did his final years in high school and he joined the army. And he did about like two or three years in the army being a normal infantryman until he kind of just decided at one moment he wanted to do something different. Paul's always, when he was younger, was always kind of a guy who was more concerned about his outward image, not like looks, but how people perceived him. And he didn't want people to perceive him as how he really felt, where he usually, he was really dealing with self-esteem issues and dealing with feeling like he was weak because his dad would always kind of like get on him about not getting into steel working and would kind of like talk down to him a lot about being weak because he was kind of a skinnier teenager. So he, one day he had there's a special forces recruiter who came and they would usually come to different regular army units and kind of give them a pitch like oh you want to be a green beret this is what you can do first thing you have to do is what we can give you a pt test tomorrow and if you pass the pt test we can send you to the selection course and then you can go to you know s fast which is selection special forces assessment selection and if you pass that then you can go to the cute course for a year and then you become special forces and you get to do all this that and the third And so he kind of like realized that he thought he would give it a shot. And the the main motivator that made him want to take that initial PT test was just to look badass to people. But like, but he's not a bloviator. He's not a guy who's like, look how badass I am. Look how da 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 da. He's just a guy who uh, basically doesn't want people, like I said, see him how he feels about himself. So he passed the PT test. He, He was athletic. He really got into the military PT kind of stuff. He went to selection. He passed selection. But he was he there. There's a there was always a side of him when he went through selection. Then when he made through that, he felt like he didn't deserve it because he kind of had moments in there where he didn't do things with the most integrity. One thing in, in, in selection, they were always pushing integrity. If they found someone was trying to cheat on something, 
if they found someone was trying to like nap when they shouldn't have been, they would get the called integrity boot where like, Hey, you're, you're, you just don't have the integrity for this. Please go. But there was, there's one key factor where at night he, they were doing a night land now land navigations where you have a compass and you're expected that you get coordinates. And you're expected to find points. And he was stuck on one of the points and he kind of cheated in the fact that he saw used chem lights in a certain area. And he realized that these used chem lights indicated that this was a well-beaten path, that there was probably a point by there. And he just randomly happened to find the point that he was looking for. But that, but that may have been his self-esteem, you know, that was the, like, like, Hey, I shouldn't have made it through here. He ended up going through the Q course. Wasn't anything. He wasn't, he was a gray man. You know, he wasn't like, you know, this isn't a racing, but he wasn't like the white, shiny knight in armor where everyone noticed him and thought he was badass and he wasn't the black where people thought he was you know wasn't doing well he was just this guy that people didn't notice he just did enough to kind of make it through and uh he became uh 18 bravo which is a special forces weapon sergeant and he got assigned to 10th special forces group in colorado in colorado springs and fort carson the thing with him though is like his first few years being special forces he was actually pretty good at it because it was a more of an image thing with him he wanted to like look the part but then eventually after his second tour in iraq he just kind of slowly started not giving a shit he, his motivation slowly started like tapering off and which is a bad thing when you're on when you're on an alpha team an a team in special forces which is like the goal every special force soldier wants to be on because it started being noticed and he started like you know, his leadership kind of started like butt heads with him and he started becoming a little bit more sloppy. He started, he did, he, he wasn't doing the, the, all the training he should have done. He was just kind of like mentally checking out. And there came a moment where it was a huge eye opener for him when they took him off an A team and they put him what's on a B team, a Bravo team, which is kind of like a big slap in the face for people who are on A teams. Usually it's where people are about to retire or people are injured or whatever. And he was none of that. He just wasn't like, he, he was checking out mentally. So he decided at that point that it was time for him to get out of the army because he kind of just figured like it wasn't for him anymore. And he felt like it was too much weight. It, he, there's no recovering from his reputation that, you know, and he didn't want to go back to the regular army, you know, what he did before. So he got out, moved back to Pennsylvania. I think we said Allentown is the town that you said. Yeah, Allentown, Pennsylvania. And due to his military background, he got a management and an HR position in some like office company there. Now, I think people have a tendency to think that all special forces soldiers are like these buffed out, like fucking steroid guys who you know, that's not the case. Uh, there's very good special forces soldiers. Uh, there are ones who go on to units like Delta force or tier one units, but then there's also just middle of the road special forces soldiers. And there's even like a, t- they call it the 10% rule where 10% of the people who make it through selection and, and, and the Q course are pieces of shit. And, and, and in all reality, Paul has this mentality where he was either the 10% that made it through, or he was just a mediocre special forces soldier, which is still pretty good, you know, compared to like what most soldiers do or whatever. But he, that's something that he juggles with in his head all the time. So went back to Allentown, got married right away to some girl he knew in high school, had a kid really quick. And immediately at the moment realized the moment that he had a kid that he wasn't happy with himself. So he wasn't happy with his marriage, you know? He quickly turned around when his wife was pregnant and started having an affair with this girl named Megan. His wife's name is Cynthia. He started having an affair with a girl named Megan. Uh, Megan is a very well-off woman, businesswoman, who, who isn't the marrying type, doesn't want kids. And kind of there was just this animal magnetism between him and her. They met one night when he went to a bar. Uh, before he came home. Now, he's not alcoholic, but sometimes he'll go and have a beer before coming home, you know, just to decompress. Uh, that, so that's been going on for like two, three years. His daughter now is about four years old. And the thing that trips him out the most and the thing that's probably keeping him married at this moment is the total adoration his daughter gives him. His daughter's like absolutely in love with him. And he's in love with his daughter. You know, he has like, she's the only one he really feels like he has a connection with in life is him and his daughter. And But he still feels like he doesn't even know how to show properly his daughter he loves her like his wife is constantly getting on him about like not doing enough things with her and you know not like going and like playing with her and all this stuff but in his head he's like hey i provide for her i'm here for her you know what i mean i'm obviously doing something right so that's paul at this moment you know in life right now so i'd say he's about 31 years old too so paul you are currently lying on your back in a motel bed about 30 minutes away from your house uh, Megan is standing in front of you by the stand that holds the 
the TV and the the dresser next to it in this somewhat cheap motel room. And uh, she's uh, zipping her dress back up and getting ready to leave. Hey, we, we're good, right? Jesus, Paul, you're not going to get all weird on me again, are you? Look, uh, you promised you were done with that kind of shit. I, I, and he just kind of stops for a second and he like looks at his phone and then he's just like, sits up a little bit and he kind of covers him, make sure the sheets over his, you know, his privates. Cause at this moment he feels kind of exposed. He's like, listen, I just, you're hard to read sometimes. And I just, we're good though. Right. Like this isn't, you know, I mean, I, listen, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I don't fucking know what to say. I, what do you want me to say? Like, I feel guilty sometimes after this shit, but I don't know. No, I don't want you to tell me that at all. You keep that shit to yourself, Paul. I told you this is about fun. And when you act like that, I'm not able to have it. Okay, listen, listen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not going to fucking happen again. I won't do this again, okay? I just sometimes laying here in fucking bed and seeing you get dressed and leave makes me kind of feel like a fucking huge asshole, okay? So maybe like a, I don't know, maybe a, a fucking thank you or maybe like, hey, that was fun or some shit instead of just like getting up and getting dressed and leaving right away, like. Come on now, right? I mean, how long have we been fucking doing this? You see her, she kind of looks at you with a kind of sorry expression. And she goes and she sits down in the chair that's next to the bed on your side. And she sits down at the table and she she lights a cigarette and she just kind of strokes your head. There, there, Paul. I, and he's just kind of like just sitting there and he's like, listen, like, and, and uh, side note out of character, the main reason he likes to sleep with her is because she's like, I mean, not to be derogatory, but she does things his wife doesn't do. You know what I mean? And he feels like he can take out like this frustration, not like in a weird 50 shades of gray, but it's definitely more versatile. You know what I mean? Aggressive sex with her. So having her do this, just kind of like, he's like, no, no, no. And he moves her hand. Listen, we're fucking good. I'm just saying like, I don't know. I don't know what to fucking think right now. Okay. Whatever we fuck. I mean, and we both sit here and we text each other like we're fucking goddamn porn stars and we say this shit to each other and then we fuck and then there's this mo- this is not natural to, to be like, you know, animals and then just to get up and fucking walk off. That's all I'm fucking saying, okay? It's like, so if I have a moment where I'm re- recalibrating and getting back in the mindset of how I should be when I head home, that's fine. Because I know tomorrow I'm going to be fucking sending you goddamn texts, asking you to send me pictures again and you're going to fucking do it and you're going to go in your fucking office bathroom and do it again. So Whatever, it's fucking good. It's all good. I don't, you know, there's, there's, and there's no way, anyways, this shit's gonna work out. Like, what am I gonna do? Leave my fucking wife and daughter, and what are we gonna do? Like, get married so we can fuck officially and not have to hide? Like, I mean, goddamn. Can you roll your uh, human? Human? What's a uh, human? Human is uh, basically the skill of reading human intentions and human emotions. And oh, trying I see. To right just there. get a, a feel for just people trying to read people basically gotcha so mine's a 10 right all right yeah so, yeah not me, that high not that high <laughs> hey he might pass now i got 77 nope you actually uh that critically it? Failed. oh critically failed okay yeah let's see this let's see where this goes okay so she kind of like turns away from you and just takes a drag on her cigarette and stares at the wall and you get this feeling that your problems just bore her that she would never settle down with you. That's just a, it's you realize, as you said it, that that was just a, it's a foolish idea. She, she only wants to just play games with you and only wants to use you for her own means. And you, what you're reading on her now is like a sense of embarrassment almost. And it makes you feel pretty shitty. Because you you kind of just see like this regret in her face. Like she's just like thinking, what am I doing? What am I doing with this guy? This, this. Okay. So he like fucking, he, I roll like to the other side of the bed. You know what I mean? I'm just like pulling out, putting on my boxer briefs. I'm like, you're such a fucking cunt. You know that you weren't fucking saying that shit when you were asking me to fucking come in your face. You weren't acting like you're fucking high and mighty above me before that, were you? Fuck you, bitch. Go, go, whatever. I'll, I'll see you next time we fuck or when you're fucking sending me a goddamn picture trying to sound like some fucking 80s playmate, dude. Like, get the fuck out of here. And she like, storms out, uh, not even letting you finish, slamming the door behind her. I'm and like, you hear her car uh, start up and basically peel out of this motel parking lot. You know she'll probably call you later. Yeah, and there's this moment, too, where I'm hit with, like, this sense of, like, guilt. Like, this happens every fucking time she leaves. Like, I'm just, like, this can't happen again, you know? I've even probably told her, 
before. Like this can't happen again. This is probably where this conversation was le- leading to before I, I read her, you know, being a total asshole to me. So I was just, you know, I'm just like, fuck. And I'm like putting on my jeans and I'm just like looking down at that stupid bedside table with the phone on there. And I see my phone and I just like, kind of like unlock the screen. I see a picture of my daughter with her like blonde hair and her green eyes or green eyes. Like I have, cause I have like brown hair and green eyes and she has these freckles like her mom. And I'm just kind of like looking down at it. Like, God, I'm such a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> you know? And I'm like getting my goddamn flannel on and I'm buttoning it up. And I'm just like, fuck man and then i stopped for a second i'm like shit i still smell like fucking pussy so i like go ahead and i go get undressed and i go to go take a shower you know i turn on the shower use the cheap hotel bar soap in there while you're taking a shower you start to think back about three weeks ago you were down at a bar drinking with your old army buddy tyler uh tyler is Somebody you served with, uh, who's also kind of from the area. I mean, he doesn't live in Allentown, but he's, you know, he's a Pennsylvania guy and like you have kept in touch with him. And occasionally you'll go drink with him because you guys have bonded and talked about things that you don't really talk about with other groups of people. You confide in him and you have told him about your, your problems and your feelings of what am I doing with my life and, and stuff like that that kind of uh, struggle to find meaning in those feelings of inadequacy. And during one of your nights out with Tyler, he tells you that he finally found some kind of work. He had a kind of crazed look in his eyes when he was talking to you about it, but Tyler always drank a ton. Ever, ever since the first day you met him, he was always the guy that could drink anybody else under the table. He had a real drinking problem, unfortunately. And you had always known that about him. And, uh, Maybe that's why you guys were such great friends. You didn't give him shit about the way that he was. You just heard him out and he heard you out and you kind of were symbiotic like that. So he tells you about this work that he finally found. You got to listen, man. It's, it's not any of the kind of stuff you'd imagine. All right. It's not, it's not mercenary shit. It's not like private security stuff, but it's stuff that's going to put, the type of skills that guys like me and you have to use. Where? Here? You just got to hear me, man. This, this is important, okay? What they're trying to do, this is, this is important shit. And he takes this, this um, it's like a business card for a uh, pet grooming uh, service. And he just uh, turns it around and writes a, a phone number on the back of it. Call this, but only when you're ready, man. Because this shit right here, this is the real deal. And once you call these guys... There's no turning back. And you kind of thought it was bullshit. But at the end of the night, you did call it. It went straight to a uh, full voicemail box, disconnected line. Uh, and you just thought, fucking crazy ass Tyler. You know, he just. Yeah, fucking. Uh, do his wrote, shit. Or wrote the number wrong, drunk ass motherfucker. But he was always the kind of guy who, like, kind of came up with, like, these weird ideas. You know, he was the type of guy that would come up with, like, a. Uh, idea for like a t-shirt business or just some other type of weird shit and try to try to reel you into it too he honestly thought he could help you you know yeah and i would say even like him being special forces with me in the army that intuitiveness he had and the ideas to like look outside the box and find solutions to things even though he was a drinker kind of like helped him when he was in the military for, you know what i mean for a little bit there so there's like that is transferring over to him trying to be entrepreneur for sure About two weeks after that, Tyler actually died in a drunk driving accident. God damn, man. Like, how many of my friends are going to fucking... This just hits me really hard because, I mean, I've had people I've known who have killed themselves or who have drank themselves to death. I mean, what the... And especially Tyler, man, because, like, Tyler was the guy who was there for me when I was going through shit and even thinking of getting out of the army, you know, and he was the one who kind of told me I could do it and... This one really hurts where the others are kind of, I'm numb to it and used to it at this point, but this one really fucking hurts. And it was, and it's still a very fresh wound. Uh, This was only, you know, less than a week ago, you actually went to Tyler's service and, you know, had to, had to try to say goodbye. And it's, you know, that's still something that's sitting with you. Obviously it's something that you're not sure will ever really go away. Yeah. I mean, uh, I've been at home, like every time I'm home and my daughter's trying to get my attention, I'm probably just sitting on the couch, like staring at the window looking at my backyard at the place set back there, or I'm not like trying to even talk to my wife that much when I'm home. I'm just kind of like, this one stings for sure. 
you ponder that in the shower for a little bit. And when you're done, I assume you maybe get yourself dressed and are probably thinking about leaving this place because it holds no good memories for you anymore. It just holds shame, regret. It's just an ugly place to be in. Not that you're particularly excited to go back home, but you just feel like this, you have to be out of here. It's just too much. Yeah. And like when I'm heading out, like I call Cynthia on the phone because I take this is modern day, right? Am I correct? Yeah. So I put her on Bluetooth while I'm driving in like my, uh, I say I have like a Jeep Grand Cherokee, you know, and I'm driving and I put her on Bluetooth and I'm like, hey, uh, I'm heading off from uh, the gym. Uh, do you need me to pick anything up at the store? No, I'm all set. Uh, your da- uh, I, f- I forget what the daughter's What's the oh, daughter's yeah. name? Yeah, let's, uh, I haven't thought of a dollar. Let's say Katie. Katie. Katie's sick again. She's running a fever. God damn it. Have you been giving her those goddamn vitamins I've been telling? Don't like, what- take this out on me. She, no, she well, probably I mean- caught it from some kid at school. You know what, Paul? I am so tired of, of you just calling me and instantly giving me bullshit. This is our child. We're trying to do this together. And I try to call you about a problem that we have. And you decided you want to quit fucking working and be a stay at home mom, right? All I'm fucking saying is she doesn't need to live off of cookies and fucking hostess snacks and all this fucking fruit. Well, I know you wouldn't have a fucking child, all this bullshit. You do not criticize my skills as a mother. You fucking bastard. And then uh, you and Cynthia kind of start to get into one of your uh, many arguments, <laughs> many arguments, uh, unfortunately. And uh, after a few minutes, um, she actually cools down a little bit and she's just like, is this what you called me for, Paul? No. OK, what? I'm sorry. Listen, I, I'm having a hard time. You fucking know I am. All right. Since fucking Tyler and all the bullshit, I'm like, whatever. I don't fucking know. I don't know. I just do you need anything from the store? Do we got any beer in the fridge? Can you look in the fridge and see if I have any of that six pack about the other night in there, please? And she she's quiet for a second and she's just like, hold on. And she go, you hear the fridge door open and she's just like, you're probably going to want to buy some more. There's only only three left in here. All right, fine. What's your, what's what's Katie's temperature anyways? It's getting a little better. I gave her some Tylenol. Look, Paul, I'm sorry about Tyler. I, I know mean, it's, it's not it's your fault. You. you don't, I, you don't need to fucking apologize. I mean, you didn't fucking make him drink. It's, it is what it is. I don't, I don't give a shit. Like, listen, and I, uh, you actually know that Cynthia kind of did not like Tyler that much. She I can imagine found can him imagine. to be not only a bad influence, but just kind of hard to be around. And I mean, she, she did meet him because, you know, he was important to you. So she was bound to meet him, but she just did not like Tyler and, Kind of did not like the time you guys spent together. Yeah, I figured, especially probably because, like, yeah, it brings out the shit that she wants me to get over. It's always this, probably this constant battle between her and I, where she wants me to reinvent myself. And even though I kind of like wasn't happy at the end of my military career, I'm always trying to like live in the past, you know what I mean? Or kind of like, I, or I'm always juggling the thought, like, what if I joined again? You know, asking her all the time, what if I joined again? You know, I could go as an officer this time, you know, get my degree or whatever, you know. And, this is, I'm not, I'm have, I'm not liking my reality that I'm currently living and being a, like some HR manager, you know? And, uh, you know, perfectly well that, uh, she is also not happy in the reality that she is living with you. She never pictured herself, um, being a full-time stay at home, uh, mom. And she feels like she's kind of trapped by the idea that she, how would she work? Who would, who would, take care of your daughter she doesn't feel like you're around enough to be taking care of her so she she feels like she's kind of um you know she she resents you a little bit and you feel it sometimes but she does love you you i mean you, i love you her my own way that, too yeah i love her my own way too definitely and, and and right now especially like megan's just like an outlet dude megan's like a for me to someone to take my frustrations out on and you know what i mean just like do you know be a fucking porn, you know, like in his head, do the shit you see in porn on this girl and take out his fucking frustration and make him feel empowered where he goes to his wife and she's usually tired from the kid or, you know what I mean? Or it's just that stage of their relationship has passed by. So he kind of feels a little guilty now when he like gets off the phone with her and he's like heading home, you know what I mean? Like, or heading to like the grocery store to get some beer or maybe a liquor store on the way there to pick up like a six pack of Coors or something like that. He's not a big drinker either, by the way. He just, like, he's a little stressed out right now, you know? So, like, to him, like, 
a few beers in a night or, you know what I mean? Something to help them sleep, you know? So as you head to the closest store, uh, keep in mind, you're still about 30 minutes away from Allentown. Every time you meet with Megan, it's always out of the way. Not only just for not wanting your wife to find out, you also just kind of out of respect in a weird way. Like you Mm -hmm. wouldn't want to do that too close to home that just like wouldn't be right. Yeah, and um, so like you're driving and your phone starts to ring and it's just a basically a unknown number. What the fuck is this shit? So I like, and especially when moods like this, I, I hope it's like a spam caller so I can be a dick to them, you know, and I like hit the, on my dash, I hit the button answer. I'm like, hello? Hello? Uh, calling for uh, Paul Sherman? Yeah, this is him. Who's this? I'm, I'm a friend of Tyler's. Oh, oh shit, man what's your name uh you can call me coach that's what tyler always called me uh you know i i met him from the from the va oh you served too yes sir vietnam oh damn were you on the team too no, well, never mind that doesn't matter like what what can i help you with man i worked with tyler on some stuff i helped kind of handle his affairs he really regretted giving you that phone number that one night at the bar I mean, it didn't fucking amount to shit. It went to like some disconnected number. So uh, I don't know. Maybe he thought he gave me a number that he, but I mean, there was nothing there, man. I don't know what to tell you. He asked me not to contact you. He even mentioned how you saved his neck a bunch of times when you guys fought together and how you had certain skills, but, and he told me he trusted you, but he wanted me not to contact you. And I'm disobeying his wishes right now by calling you. But I need you to understand, boy, I don't have any other choice. Tyler's passing. It's left an uh, occupational vacancy. And uh, now that has to be filled. I'm, well, like I'm a stoplight. I'm going to imagine I just pop open my glove compartment to make sure my M1911 is in there that I have. You know what I mean? I just like close it up again. And I'm just like, man, listen, I don't, I don't know who you are, coach. Uh, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I work in an HR shop, man. Like I've, I do HR. I don't know what the fuck occupational bullshit. I don't know. Listen, man. Yes, I was on the teams of fucking whatever, dude. I was. I I haven't been around shit like that. And even when I was in, I wasn't around spook shit. So what the fuck are we talking about here, man? I don't know if Tyler told you about the nature of the type of stuff he was doing at all. No, nah, he just said it was important shit. I mean, but it's Tyler, man. Everything's important with Tyler. So he didn't. Hmm. Well, maybe that's good. Look, uh, can you meet me somewhere? Uh... <laughs> Where the... I'm thinking for a second, and I'm just like looking out of the like the pastor side. Of... Look, buddy, you need money. No, help no. me out. I can make it worth your while. I'm just looking out the pastor side. I probably see like this fucking dad in a station wagon with a wife and a kid, just looking miserable. And I'm just like, and I'm like, look straight ahead. I'm like, where are you at, man? I'm over at the Golden Taste Chinese restaurant. Is that by where I'm at right now, kind of? Yeah, it's about like 15 minutes away when you punch it into your GPS. And at first, you're kind of just thinking like, what the fuck, dude? Like, (laughs) you don't know how close or how far it's going to be. And you're about to just maybe say fuck off. Yeah. I mean, especially bringing up Tyler. Like, I know. Like, I'm just like. But you're you're just like you you type it in because you kind of don't want to go home yet. I don't, and I saw this family next to me with this miserable dad, and I, you know what I mean. I'm just like, and then I'm thinking, man, this sounds like a little interesting, and it's not HR. You know, I'm getting that same fucking buzz I get when I'm about to fuck Megan. You know what I mean? It's just like it's like, oh shit, I can get to be someone I'm not. You know what I mean? I get to for a moment, and I'm like thinking to myself, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna be there, man. Listen, I'm gonna be there in about fifteen to twenty minutes. If you're not there, I'm gone. All right, so. Be there in 15 to 20 minutes, okay? I don't got time to waste, all right, man? I'm only doing this, too, because you fucking Tyler, all right? So, sounds all good. All right, buddy. All right, Thank man. You. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, and I hang up on him, and then I call, like, I call uh, Cynthia, and I'm like, hey, listen, I'm going to pick up some Chinese. Are you hungry? Yeah, yeah. All right, same thing. I certainly don't feel like cooking. Yeah, okay, I'll get you wontons, and we can share that shit. All right, cool. All right. And just get up. the stuff I usually like. Yeah, I will. And I hang up on her like, and I'm just like driving. I probably like put on like, I got this running playlist that I do and I go run and it probably has like metallic on Slayer and like all this like, you know what I mean? So I just kind of like play it like in my Jeep as I like fucking start driving towards this Chinese place. Cause in his, like I said, this has been fucking Paul his whole fucking life. 
you know, how he really feels inside is never portrayed on the outside, you know? And so this is just another layer. He feels like he can cover it up. And even having someone like call him and be like, I heard you're fuck know some shit, you know, even though he's like I said, a mediocre fucking special forces soldier. He's like, Oh yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like in a weird way, you know, it's like when Megan like sends him dirty, raunchy shit, he's like, Oh, a woman thinks that I'm worthy of this. You know, when he has his wife at home, who's in her sweatpants with the, puking you know what i mean kid and everything like that so it's like yeah i'm taking off over there and about 20 minutes of of driving you get to this uh restaurant it's like this really small chinese restaurant that's in a plaza with some other places maybe just like a few like retail places and like a liquor store and just some other kind of just like random businesses yeah when i get out my vehicle also i'm going to take my my 1911 that I have in the, like a holster and kind of like clip it to my belt, put my flannel over it, you know, just, this is sketch, you know what I mean? And like, and uh, I don't know if uh, Pennsylvania has concealed carry laws, but we'll, we'll just say he has a concealed carry permit, you know what I mean? And so he just, it's going to walk in like that. So you enter this restaurant, it's very run down looking on the inside, not very well lit. The walls are kind of painted like a dark color, uh, maybe like a, a dark green or something. And it has this kind of layer of dust over it. It doesn't look like a particularly cleanly place. The windows look kind of dirty. Uh, you see, like, the um, oriental artwork that, like, a lot of Chinese restaurants have with, like, uh, these red and gold banners and maybe just, like, some different statues. And the scroll, like, art that's, like, on the like the scrolls that are unrolled. Yeah, exactly. Thing. Yeah. And uh, the second you walk in the door you're waved down by uh, a man sitting at a table by himself. Uh, He looks like he's about in his fifties. He's a sturdy looking guy. He's got a short gray uh, crew cut. He's wearing a white uh, short sleeve button up shirt with a black tie. You can see he's, he's got like his shirt. It looks pretty, pretty ironed. And his haircut is just like that classic military buzz cut. He's wearing uh, one of those plastic, like, waterproof watches. Yeah, 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 for sure. And he's just uh, eating, like, this, this from this big bowl of noodles. And he sees you come in, and he beckons you forward. And he just kind of, with his mouth full, is just like, come, come over. I take it he's facing the door, right? Is that where, he, like, he's sitting? So when I'm going to go sit opposite him. I'm going to kind of turn my chair to, like, a little angle where I can see him, but I can still see the door, you know, because I don't like having my back to the to doors this is like something that's kind of like stuck with them so i'm gonna sit down and i'm gonna be like uh so what 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 do, what do you want here buddy and i like kind of like look at him eating this food he notices the way that you move your chair and he smiles but uh doesn't really seem to mind and he asks you if you do you want any food uh he, i look at the waitress i'm like yeah I, i'm gonna get something to go though so for my old lady i'm more interested in what what you have to tell me though man you sounded really kind of indecisive on the phone, like you even wanted to talk to me. Right, right. Okay, I'll get right to it. And he, he, you see him, he stands up and he takes a napkin and he's wiping the food away from his face and he kind of just sets everything back down on the table and he picks up this, uh, it's almost like a briefcase style bag from underneath the table and he just goes, come on, follow me. And you see him, he just very casually uh, starts walking towards the back of the, the restaurant. Whoa. And he goes all the way back into the kitchen. He's still motioning for you to, to follow him. I'm and a, none of the people in the kitchen seem to mind at all that yeah, I'm gonna, you guys I'm, are going back here. I'm going to do a scan as I'm walking forward slowly. I'm just kind of like scanning the, the area ahead of me, just looking for anything that stands out. Like I said, like Paul was good at what he did for, you know, he was good at what he did. He just said there's a period where mentally he just checked out and he just knows like, there's a switch in him that just becomes hyper vigilant in situations like this. Like he doesn't like to be in crowded areas because he finds himself like scamming people all the time. You know what I mean? And always feeling that edge. So that's, he's, that definitely is kicking in right now as he's walking in, but it's almost like I said that same fucking feeling, dude, like when like Megan sends him a picture or he has like an alert, you know what I mean? Like that. He loves that little fucking bump. It's giving him right now, you know? So he, yeah. Anyways, I'm just kind of like scanning the head wall and I'm walking forward, but I'm definitely like looking, like making sure like what the fuck is up in here, you know? Yeah, and so he kind of motions for you to follow him into this kitchen. As you enter the kitchen, you kind of see it's very loud. There's all these um, all these different cooks in there, and it's kind of a tight space, and they're all 
shouting orders and instructions and stuff like that at each other. And they look at you guys, but they don't uh, mind at all that you're mm-hmm. back there. And coach kind of um, motions you forward into this, into this office that's in maybe like the manager's office of that place. It's just a very small computer room, a little bit down a hall from the, from the kitchen. And the second you get inside there with coach, you realize right away, this is not his office. Um, there's just pictures of Asian family and uh, just all this different personal belongings of whoever does the bookkeeping at this particular office. There's one of the chunky uh, desktop computers um, there's post-it notes everywhere and stuff. Fucking Tyler, man. God damn it, dude. He was like, I'm just thinking in my head, like he's into some spook shit because like, even like in the community I was part of, there's people who were like went to South America in the eighties or, you know what I mean? Or kind of like supported. I'd say maybe even Iraq a couple of times at escort, you know, spook type shit. And I'm just like, those alarms are going off my head, especially with the old school high and tight, you know what I mean? And the waterproof watch. And I'm like, and the casual reference to Nam, even though it was like, not saying he had a long military career. I mean, this guy's t- a total fucking spook, you know what I'm saying? Like, God damn. But I'm like kind of a little elated a little bit about this. Cause I'm like, again, stop fucking feeling alive. And I'm like looking at him. I'm like, so let's just be out in the open right now, man. And Hey, the, the more you're honest with me, the more you're going to get quality interactions with me. I'm just going to say that, but are you a spook man? you work for one of the alphabet groups? Is that, is that what this is? You see him, he's like reluctant to answer. And he's he's looking around, he goes to speak, and he's trying to think of what to say. I'm trying to read him too, because I, can I roll anything to like read his like... Yeah, you can language? do human again. And um, right. yeah, you can just do human again. Okay, it's worth a try, you know? <laughs> oh shit, dude, 91. <laughs> so like, you're just getting this really cold read from him. Hmm. And... I mean, I don't know how to like really say it without like, I don't want to be like disrespectful or anything to like uh, people who have served, but like you like are able to like read from him that like he's seen shit and just like he knows how to uh, conceal emotions. He knows how to hide. So he's, yeah, he's try- he's hiding his shit. From yeah, me, I, yeah. I mean, I kind of, uh, I get it. You know what I mean? Like no one wants, I mean, I do that. That's what the fuck I, I do all the time, man. That's my life right now. Hiding how I really feel. So I just kind of like, yeah, I'm I'm sitting down in the chair waiting for him to answer me, you know. Maybe if you help me, I can I can really tell you what we're what we're trying to do here. Let me just say that it's important. I don't want you to think I'm some kind of fucking nut. I don't believe in Bigfoots or anything like that, okay? But I do think there's stuff out there that we're not supposed to know about. The people, the general population, the public. You know about that, son. You're a soldier. It was your job to serve and protect them. I kind of look regular at, folks. I'm kind of looking at him like the fuck. And I'm like, his face looks crazy as he's telling you this. Wait, 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 wait. So you're trying to tell me right now. Look, I'm just closing my eyes for a second. I'm thinking he starts fuck? fishing out this. Uh, he starts opening the bag and he starts fishing out this iPad or some kind of t- uh, tablet. Yeah. And he's fumbling with it a little bit to get it open. I'm just looking at it and I'm like, wait, wait, buddy, you're, are we talking about, I think we're not on the same wavelength here, man. Are you talking about bad guys trying to do shit to hurt civilians? Or why, why the fuck did you mention Bigfoot? And What the fuck does Bigfoot have to... Maybe if I show you this, you'll understand, all right? I mean, you know Tyler was pretty open to some out there ideas. Or the Jack Daniels he drank was. I mean, who fucking knows? But okay, what, what, what do you got there, man? And you see him, he's kind of fumbling, trying to get this, this thing set up. And he starts to play a video file. Um, and uh, you see in this video, it's a, it's a man standing in the woods. Uh, it's near a tent. And he's, uh, he's propping like a camera up on a tripod, kind of trying to get it set up. And he's positioning himself in front of it, uh, getting ready to talk. It's a disheveled looking guy, uh, maybe in his 50s. He's got uh, gray hair sticking out of both sides of a winter cap kind of like a mad scientist and he's wearing this type of a uh, blue camouflage that just does not blend. It's like an Arctic camo or something. And it just like, does not tactically go with his background yeah, no. at all. Yeah, yeah, Not tactical at all. Yeah. Um, and he starts, you know, saying the date and time he's giving coordinates and uh, he's talking about um, his, his search, you know, his search for a, uh, 
for a stick man is something you hear and coaches like kind of talking to you while this thing is playing. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm like rubbing my forehead. I'm just like, what the fuck did like talk? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just like, look at this video, listening to him talk. I'm like, Oh my God. You ever heard of cryptozoology son? What the? F- oh, then I'm like, I'm having that sense of regret. I just had, after you're like getting ready to probably make it. Yeah. And I'm just like, listen, no, no, listen, man. And I'm just kind of like looking around the room like, oh, my God, how the fuck did I get myself in this situation? I get up. I'm like, listen, um, I, I, you, you, you had your pitch, brother. I'm not like uh, I'm not the man you're looking for, dude. All right. Like I, this shit. I'm sure there's people out there who believe it, who could help you. And maybe Tyler did. And God rest his soul. I hope he, you know, I'm not going to judge him, man. He was there for me. He was a close friend. But uh, I, listen, dude, I'm just a fucking husband and a father, man. All right. And um. I got to pay my bills. I, I don't, I got no time for this shit. I'm sorry. Right. No hard feelings, man. Uh, really no hard feelings. Look, 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 let me, this guy in this video, his name's Gerald. Okay. And he was a friend of mine or a friend of Tyler's. He had a knack for digging up weird kind of shit and getting himself in trouble doing things he shouldn't have been. And he's usually full of shit. Look, I, I don't believe in this shit. He is almost always full of shit. But he's kind of given us some clues to some shit that ain't right in the past. And now he's he's missing. And I know Tyler would have wanted to find him. Tyler also wanted to drink a fifth every day. And look where it got him, man. Look, I'm in a tight spot, all right? Is I know there something I can do to convince you? Listen, man, I got bills. Just pick up pay. Tyler's slack. It's not, not going to be nothing dangerous. Listen, I got a nine to five job I got to do. All right. I got a kid with a fucking fever at home and I got a wife who's at her wits end with me. Okay, man. I like, listen, I can't, I just can't do this, bro. Like that life is behind me. I can't, I don't know what the, even when I was, I didn't do shit like this in the military, man. Like looking for stick, man, crypto, Look, whatever, man. Like, I'm sorry. Maybe I shouldn't have even mentioned uh, the type of shit that Tyler and Gerald were into, but. Look, he's probably just being an idiot in the woods. Can you just bring him back for me? What day is it today? Like, is it a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever? We'll say it's a Friday. It's a Friday? Okay. Wait, where was the last time you saw this asshole at, man? Looks like he was making some kind of video broadcast, but this one he had he had rigged it to play if he never got back to his camp because we can't get in touch with him at all, and it's been about three days. Where was he at? Like, what forest was he around? Uh, Allegheny National Forest, and you know that's about like four hours. I'm doing north the math in my head. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, Listen, man. Okay. Oh my fucking god! I can't believe I'm doing this shit. <laughs> it's just, I would say that as I'm like scratching my face. Who do you work for, man? I, I know you're a fucking spook. Who do you fucking work for? I'll be honest with you, son. Right now, I'm not really sure who I take my orders from. I'll tell you this: I'm ex-military, and when they ask, I answer. And who's who's they, man? Who's fucking they? People I don't know. People I'm not cleared to know. And neither are you, son. But this is important shit. Important shit? Why? Okay, okay, okay. First things first. If I do this and I find this guy, can you get me a job? Can you get me a job? Like, what, what, like whatever the fuck you do? Absolutely. I'll, I'll have you pick up right where Tyler left off. How much Listen, does Tyler get paid a year? Who did Tyler fucking work for? Tyler was compensated well. Our benefactors. Define fucking well, man. Your definition of well, my definition of well may not be the fucking same. Is there 401k? Is there fucking goddamn dental? Is there fucking medical? Are we talking six figures? Are we talking or off the books. I'm just like thinking for a second. All right. Listen, man. This is what I'm willing to do at first. I'll go look for this guy because it's the fucking weekend. I want 10 grand. For if I, I want 10 grand, half up front, half when I find him, if I find him. 15 and done. What time of the year is it? Is it like winter, spring? It's early summer. Early summer. I mean, this is fucking nice. I can get away from fucking Cynthia. My kid has a fever. I mean, that kind of sucks, but she says it's going down. If I get this fucking money, that'll shut her up, open some fucking potential doors for me. I really need to clean my head. I'm just like thinking to myself, and I'm like, all right, man. Cool. Listen, you got yourself a deal. Um, I need the grid cornet where you last saw him at. I can't guarantee I'm going to find the guy. All right, buddy. Like, but I'm going to. That's fine. Look, yeah. if you find anything out and I'll be grateful. Well, well, my plan is, uh, it's about what? It's about eight o'clock right now. I look at my watch. I'm like, I'll go home, get my, get my kit together. I'll hit the road like five, four in the morning. Uh, I'll get there. 
you got do, do, the number you call me at? Is that where you want me to call you with updates? He starts to write down a number on a sticky note. Here's a number you can call. Don't call it unless you need to. And I'm fucking serious about that. All right, man. Uh, money. I like looking at him right now. <laughs> you wait here, okay? All right. And I'm like thinking to myself, like, I'm thinking, he, like, go ahead. He exits the the small office, and uh, this is a small restaurant. So you you hear that bell as the door opens, uh, and he leaves. And uh, less than a minute later, you hear that bell ring again as he comes back, and he just goes back into the office and just throws this black bag down in front of you, something he just got from his truck. This totally reminds me of when I went to Afghanistan. We're fucking paying warlords off, you know, like these spook guys. We'd escort them to do this shit. Like I, I this motherfucker, I know he's a goddamn spook. So I fucking open my the bag and I look inside the bag. Give me a bureaucracy roll. Oh no, yes. accounting, accounting. Okay, I'll do I, I wanted to see if you like can. And there's like no, there's no uh, like willpower in the system, right? Nothing like that. No. Okay, no worries. Jesus Christ, I'm fucking, I, uh, what do you call that? A critical error or whatever? I got 98. <laughs> okay, so you only critical error when you get uh, two of the same number. Like, so oh, okay. you get 99 or oh, something. Gotcha. And it's, okay. old, so it's a fail, but you get like two of the same number. Okay, gotcha. So like, you can't really tell how much money it is, but that looks like fucking a lot of money in there. All right, man. You, got you get this weird uh, rush when you mm. look into it. It's kind of just like this nervousness, just like, holy shit, like this is fucking hard cash right now. And it's just like sitting right in front of you. And he's just like, he's looking just so casual about this. And you see like, there's just this like, this kind of like, he takes like a nervous like gulp a little bit, but he's not sweating or like anything like that. He's just kind of. You all right there, buddy? I'm fine. All right, I get up and I take the bag. I'm like, I'm going to look for this guy until Sunday at 8 p.m. Hey, 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 Paul, Paul, Paul. Hey, before you leave, he kind of like pulls you in to like whisper to you. You, yeah. you got a piece? You, you yes. carry a piece with you? Yes. I'm okay. good. Tyler always carried a piece. I'm not saying you're going to run into any trouble. Oh, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there armed. Don't worry. I'm going to be in the fucking middle of the forest in the summertime, a Pennsylvania forest. You better damn well I'm going to be armed. So don't worry about that, okay? Okay, and uh, so he said he'd be uh, checking out this mine up in the forest. It's called the Big Skip Mine. Big Skip Mine? You should be able to find it. It's uh, closed down. Shouldn't be anybody up there. Man, I'm getting rushed because I'm thinking to myself, like, I still got my kit in my garage. I got my rappel rope. I got my rappel gear. I'm going to take my AR. I'm going to take a hunting rifle to have good cover. You know what I mean? But I'm going to have my AR with me. My not Listen, not son, I can, I can see you're getting excited. I just want you to know, I want this done soon, like ASAP soon. Okay, I, I want you to head out as soon as you can tonight. You stop somewhere if you have to. I do not care. I need this resolved one way or another. I got people I got to answer to. Of course, of course. Like I said, man, I'm going home. I'm going to hit the road at four in the morning, and I'll be there at eight, and I'll start my look, look. Don't get local authorities involved. You get jammed up. You just make some shit up. Do whatever you have to do. Don't mention me. Don't mention Tyler to anybody. Yeah, of course. Of course. Don't worry. And like I said, if I don't find this guy by Sunday at 8 p.m., it's done. All right. You just come back. That money's still yours. I'll All never right. bother you again if you don't want. All right. Sounds good. And uh, I get up and I shake his hand. I reach my hand out to shake it. It's a deal, partner. I go walking out. I totally forget about the Chinese food that I'm like there to get my wife. You know what I mean? I go out to my car and I or my Jeep and in my glove compartment. I take out a thing of school long cut that I've kind of keep even though my wife hates it when i do and i kind of like pack it and i like take a pinch and i throw it in my lip and i'm just like oh shit and i kind of got like a little like i mean not that it matters but i'm kind of got like semi wood right now and i'm like in my mind for a quick second i'm like maybe i could call megan before i head home but then i'm like no nah, fuck this shit i got like a, i got i got real shit to do and i feel like how i felt my first three years being in group you know what i mean being in special forces like i felt like I'm on it. I'm already like picturing everything. I'm going to pack up and everything. I'm just like, while I'm driving home, like, fuck, what am I going to tell? What am I going to tell Cynthia? Like, I got to fucking think of something. And then I'm, I've, I found like lying to her. Uh, the easy, easiest way to lie to her is to be as close to the truth as I can. So I'm going to just say like, Hey, a, um, a buddy of Tyler's like is end up missing in a forest. And like one of Tyler's old drinking buddies called me and asked me to go help look for him. So and they, they're going to pay me money. And I'm going to, you know, if I find them and, it's a lot of money and, you know, and we can put it towards, and in and, and all reality, this money I'm planning to put in, um, 
in Katie's college fund, you know, that I have, I've started, you know, so like, I'm not like doing this for selfish reasons for myself, you know? So that's what I'm thinking about as I like drive into the driveway of my house. And as you're driving and you're thinking, thinking about Tyler, thinking about this guy coach who you just met and how fucking insane it all is. You do think about just the prospect of just having that steady cash and you just start to imagine your problems just getting erased and you're just getting this this really good feeling. You're in good spirits. Yeah, for sure. Having I mean, this bag of cash in the car with you. Oh, yeah, totally. And doing what I have been missing in a way doing. You know what I mean? Like, I'm even thinking to myself, like, I don't need Megan anymore. I don't need to. You know what I mean? Like, I can, like, if I do this shit, I'll be happy. My marriage will work out. You know, everything will work out fine. I mean, is it reality? I don't Probably not. You know, but, like, you know, like, this is, like, I've always... For how much I hated the end of the military, I've, like I said, his he's like always been like wanting to go back to that in a way, and this is, feels like he's going back to it, you know. Even if he doesn't believe in the Bigfoot or whatever, the you know, like he cut that shit off, and that guy started talking. I was like, just just don't fucking, I don't even know all that. Just tell me you okay. You want me to find a missing guy? I'll find a missing guy, some idiot who who's wearing Arctic camo in the forest, you know. But I'll find that guy probably probably be cold and have hypothermia, you know what I mean? But uh yeah well i mean it's summertime but you know what i mean it'll probably be whatever still somehow who yeah, knows dehydrated looks like, an idiot. Yeah, looks like an idiot dude so you'll probably be making all this noise if a bear hasn't gotten him already you know so we'll say uh we don't have to role play out you getting home and talking to cynthia because we'll say that you know she resists at first and then she kind of understands to try to help you cope you know and she's just like okay like if you need to take a weekend do it that's fine do I pick that up? Like, do I pick up the fact that she's like giving in to, to help me? Like, am I like picking up that? You do. You do. Yeah, you makes feel this sense guilty. of deep care. Yeah. That she just would kind of do anything just to have you be just an ounce happier. I'm such a piece of shit. Like, I'm literally in the garage, like packing my, you know what I mean? Getting my gear. I got my hunting rifle in this case. I got my AR, which I'm going to like hide because you know, I don't want anyone to. See me with the AR, you know what I mean? I'm getting my rucksack and putting my Gore-Tex sleeping bag, wet weather gear, MREs, chem lights, rappel rope, you know what I mean? Flashlights. Like I'm getting all the all 80 pounds of my shit, you know what I mean? My kit with me. And I'm just while I'm doing it, like I have this term, like like I'm like, this is gonna work. This is gonna fix my marriage. Cause like I can't be a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Like she's letting me do this and it but it like empowers like I feel like, oh my my woman's behind me. She's behind me, like, you know what I mean? And I don't, I don't, you know, I think I don't get that. I, I don't get that sense of accomplishment, like processing HR complaints and fucking like, you know what I mean? Like at this stupid menial job I have. So yeah, man. And uh, you kind of see like, she's basically at this point where she's like, I can accept no, no real info, no real answers. If this is like, going to just make you happy and she's enjoying your brief happiness in that second. And she kisses you before you leave. And you feel this connection like when you guys first started to become serious together. And, uh, you know, like you had dated her in high school and stuff like that. But when you guys got were kind of hot and heavy and like you really did feel like in love with her, you, you remember that when she kisses you. Oh, hello again, folks. I'd like to tell you about the Facebook group we run called White Wolf and Onyx Path RPGs Gameplay and Media. Have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts or just media in general that deals with your favorite White Wolf role-playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded? One that won't be drowned out by random posts and discussions so that your media could give the attention you deserve. The group is specifically run with the sole intent of being a one-stop shop for people to view or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. The group is already immense and continuing to rapidly grow, with new media being shared every day. Stop on by. We hope to see you there.